Good morning and welcome to our first attempt at a virtual online Sunday School. Thank you for joining us this morning. We're going to be looking at a session titled Holy Vocabulary, Unpacking the Language of Faith. This time we are using LifeWay's program called Bible Studies for Life. We have some of these materials available here at the church if you don't already have a copy. And we would encourage you to stop by the church, pick up a copy, or if you prefer, we can make arrangements to drop a copy off at your home as long as our supplies last. So feel free to contact the church if you don't have a copy of this and we'll make arrangements to, to get you what we can available. So as we do this, today is just a pre-recorded session, kind of a review of the first three weeks that are in this session. But we do plan on going to a more feedback friendly version at some point here, possibly through Zoom or a similar app. So keep in touch, follow what's going on, and we'll do our best to keep you informed and up to date on how to participate in this program. The writer starts us in this lesson here. He says, has a sentence here, it says, at first I thought he was awful, but he turned out to be a nice guy. Now we may think that we know what that statement means, but consider the original meaning of some of these words. The word awful meant something full of awe and inspiring reverential wonder. The word nice meant the word originally referred to something silly, foolish, ignorant, or senseless. And the word guy, this word was used to refer to someone frightening or grotesque. Guy Fawkes was part of an attempt to blow up the British Parliament in 1605. Afterward, the people would burn his effigy, a Guy Fawkes or a Guy. So obviously what we think we understand may be different from what the true meaning is. We've all had that happen when we've had text messages back and forth. We think we know what the person sending that meant, but we kind of misunderstand what the real message was. Writer says that although English vocabulary continues to grow and many words slowly change in meaning, our understanding of some words should never change. Unfortunately, however, it does. When our culture changes the connotations of some words, it can seriously impact our understanding of truth. In this study, we're going to recapture the meaning of six key words and phrases in the Bible. Holy, lost, salvation, faith, sanctified, and eternal life. It doesn't matter how our culture uses these words. What matters is how God intended for us to understand them. Their meaning makes all the difference in the world. We're going to, as I said, review the first three sessions in this segment of, of the lesson. And so some of you have been through this material before, bear with us. Um, you may still get some, some new insight as we look at this. The object, the point today is to cover the scripture from each lesson because scripture is always good to focus on. And also we're going to focus on the point of each lesson. So our first session was on holy, the word holy. And the point is that God is distinct from and above absolutely everything else. It starts with Isaiah chapter 40, verses 25 and 26. To whom will you compare me? Or who is my equal? asked the Holy One. Look up and see. Who created these? He brings out the stars by number. He calls all of them by name. Because of his great power and strength, not one of them is missing. So through the prophet Isaiah, God asked two foundational questions. Who is like me? And who is equal to me? If we attempt to answer those questions, those rhetorical questions, with anything but the obvious answer, no one, then we have not set apart God as holy. 
we have erroneously set as equals two distinctly different beings. Writer asks a, a question here for you to reflect on. In what settings do you find yourself in awe of God? Or maybe even, do you find yourself in awe of God? Do we recognize God for who he truly is? As we look at our next set of scripture, we see that God is without equal as our creator. But in the next verses, we'll see that God is without equal in his knowledge. We're now looking at Isaiah chapter 40, verses 27 and 28. Jacob, why do you say, and Israel, why do you assert... My way is hidden from the Lord, and my claim is ignored by my God. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the whole earth. He never becomes faint or weary. There is no limit to his understanding. Just as the Israelites needed reminded of who God is, we also need to be reminded. God is. So as we focus on verse 28, let's, let's read that again. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the whole earth. He never becomes faint or weary. There is no limit to his understanding. That is our God. In our next verse, Verses, we're going to see that God is without equal as our sustainer. Once again in Isaiah chapter 40, verses 29 through 31. He gives strength to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Youths may become faint and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who trust in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not become weary. They will walk and not faint. So facing our weaknesses is not just about physical limitations. We can struggle spiritually. We can feel weak when it comes to maintaining good relationships, struggling with temptation, or enduring difficulties at work or at home. We may want to do the right thing, but we can't stand on our own. Thankfully, God can sustain us. In fact, God is the only one who can sustain us. To sustain means to strengthen or support mentally or physically. And we all need to be strengthened and supported, even when we are young. No one can sustain himself nonstop. We all have limits. And during this time of isolation, many of us have probably found that we've been close to our limits in some issues. So hopefully you've learned and trusted in God and allowed Him to give you the strength you need to deal with these hard times. Today, right now, in the midst of a pandemic, is the time to trust in the Lord. Let Him renew your strength, and He will. So once again, our point in this lesson is that God is distinct from and above absolutely everything else. Our word is holy. The second session focuses on the word lost. The point is that without Christ, we are hopelessly lost. Think about a time when you or someone you love was physically lost. How did you feel when you learned that they were lost, when it was realized that they were lost? Maybe fearful, maybe scared, worried. All kinds of emotions ran through you at that time, didn't they? Now, think about what it's like to know that you or someone you love is lost spiritually. They are separated from God. 
Does that make you fearful? Worried? Scared? It should. Let's look at our scripture this week. <clears throat> We're in the book of Luke, chapter 15, verses 11 through 14. He also said, A man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the estate I have coming to me. So he distributed the assets to them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered together all he had and traveled to a distant country where he squandered his estate in foolish living. After he had spent everything, a severe famine struck, struck that country, and he had nothing. So in this parable, the younger son thought he knew where he wanted to go. It was a destination framed in lavish living and focused on money. The high life awaited him, or so he thought. Far too often we make the same mistake. We have a picture in our minds of what life should look like. The destination where we want to go. But without God's perspective, we don't realize that we've chosen the wrong route and the wrong destination. We are lost because we choose to live apart from God. In our next verses we see that to turn toward God we must acknowledge our lost condition and unworthiness. In Luke chapter 15 verses 17 through 19 when he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired workers have more than enough food? And here I am, dying of hunger. I'll get up, go to my father, and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired workers. If you're familiar with this story, you remember that the son went through his wealth very quickly. And because the country was in famine at the time and he had no money, he had to figure out how to survive. He ended up tending to hogs. And as a result of that, in feeding them their slop, he was found himself looking longingly at what they were eating and thinking that even they ate better than he did. That was the low point that he had gotten to. At that point, he realized that he had made a mess of things, that he had made bad decisions, and that he was lost, and that he needed to go back to his father. So if you are a saved believer in Jesus Christ, how did you come to your sense of spiritually? How did you wake up and realize that you were separated from the Almighty God? And how did you realize that you were better to restore a relationship with him than to stay separated? Now ask yourself the question, how can you help someone else come to their sense of spiritual? Now ask yourself, what are you doing to make that happen? Next set of scripture here is in Luke chapter 15, verses 20 through 24. So he got up and went to his father. But while the son was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran, threw his arms around his neck, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father told his servants, Quick! Bring out the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Then bring the fatted calf and slaughter it, and let's celebrate with a feast. Because this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. God the Father will accept us back no matter what we straying from him. No matter how we've lived, no matter how bad our choices
choices have been, it's never too late for us to say, Father, I have done wrong, I have done badly, and I have been wrong against you. And he will welcome us back the same as the Father in this parable welcomed his Son. So once again, our point this week is that without Christ, we are hopelessly lost. Our word was lost. final session that we'll review this week is on the word salvation. Our point is, Jesus made it possible for us to be righteous before God. Our scripture comes from Romans chapter 3, verses 20 through 22. For no one will be justified in his sight by the works of the law, because the knowledge of sin comes through the law. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been revealed, attested by the law and the prophets. The righteousness of God is through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe, since there is no distinction. No one will be justified in God's sight by means of personal righteousness or on the basis of personal works. If you are trying to live in a manner that is good enough to get you into heaven, you're wasting your efforts. It's only by the righteousness of Jesus that we can enter God's presence. Only through faith in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. There is no other way. Scripture is clear on that. We are declared righteous by Christ, the one who is righteous. In the next verses, we see that we are redeemed by Christ and brought back to God. Romans 3, verses 23 and 24. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Knowing the fact of verse 23, that all have sinned, aren't you glad to know the truth of verse 24? That we are justified by grace through Jesus Christ. Now that doesn't happen automatically. You have to accept that gift from God through Jesus Christ. You have to recognize Jesus as your Lord and Savior. In our next verse, Verses we see that through our faith in him, our sins were atoned for by Christ. We're now in Romans chapter 3, verses 25 through 28. God presented him as an atoning sacrifice in his blood, received through faith to demonstrate his righteousness, because in his restraint, God passed over the sins previously committed. God presented him to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time, so that he would be righteous and declare righteous the one who has faith in Jesus. Where then is boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By one of works? No. On the contrary, by a law of faith. For we conclude that a person is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. Faith in Jesus Christ is the only way to find salvation, to change our lost state to a state of fellowship with the Almighty God. Righteousness can only be achieved through faith in Christ, and that excludes any kind of boasting on our behalf. The law was put in place to reveal our shortcomings. Therefore, it gives us no grounds for boasting. We all fail at keeping the law. We cannot keep the law. Thankfully, we can be justified through faith. Faith is our complete trust in Christ. Our faith is in the one who has completely satisfied God's righteous and holy demands. That and that alone is our salvation. So our point, once again, in this third session... Jesus made it possible for us to be.
be righteous before God. Our word was salvation. But thank you for your patience as we work through this process of trying to figure out how to do a virtual Sunday school class. Um, bear with us as we work out the kinks and, and difficulties in this process. There will be some transitioning and some changes, some refining, and we welcome your feedback. Now, next week, we will discuss session four. The word is faith, and that will be our holy vocabulary word for next week's session. Now, if you want to discuss anything that was presented today, you can contact us on our Facebook account. You can call the church directly at 217-632-2488, or you can call or text me at 217-306-7019. We look forward to hearing from you. Look forward to being able to join you in corporate worship very soon. Stay in the Word. Stay healthy. And we will see you soon.